Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today on the mill I've got a uh, eight and a half foot long black cherry. It's got a couple of large knots on it. I'm hoping to get some real good crotch wood, some real uh, good figure and feathering. The plan is to slab this up, 10 quarter probably. I've worked on it a considerable amount with a chainsaw just to get it to fit through the throat. I don't have a, a wide head saw mill, so I've got 27 and a half inches between the rollers. I've got it worked out, I think, where it'll just pass the rollers on both sides. Uh, that's to be determined yet, though, really. The plan is we're gonna take a bark slab cut off of here, and uh, then we'll take a couple of 10 quarter slabs and see what they're looking like. Probably go all the way to the pith before we worry about doing anything else with it. But we'll probably stop in the middle and take a look and see what we've got going on. Give me just a minute and we'll get started. Today on the mill, I've got a brand new Turbo 747 blade. Most of the time I don't prefer to start out cutting slabs off of a log with a brand new blade. However, this one is for sure the second or third cut up into the tree, so I don't think there's any danger of hitting any metal. It's been a week or so since I ran the mill. I was on vacation for about a week. Um, before I started it up, I did check the oil and everything. However, I did not check the fuel level. Uh, about here, you can see here the mill kind of surging and sputtering. I edited it out, but I had to stop and fill up the gas tank. I've got the head on the mill raised as high as it'll go, which is 30 inches from the bed. As you can see where that slab cut got cut off there, the little end of that is just a little under 30, and it's actually crooked down between the log bunks on the mill there. The uh, large end is about 36 inches. There's a couple of branches that came out of this log toward the operator end that are one's kind of facing the camera and down angle, and the other one is on the opposite side, but down angle a little bit. So they aren't 180 out on the tree. They're kind of swung around both toward the bottom just a little bit. I've trimmed them down with a chainsaw, trying to get them small enough that they'll pass through the head on the mill. There was also a couple little small knots up toward the end close to the camera that uh, had the center of them rotted out. So I guess they had been trimmed, limbed up, and started rotting out because of the exposed wood can't tell how far that goes into the log at the moment though. In the intro I said that we was going to cut some 10 quarter slabs out of this. By this point I've actually rolled it around in my head and decided to go 11 quarter which is 2 and 3 quarter inch thick. Um, and this thing is, this, this first one isn't all the way down but the majority of these are a full 27 and a half wide, two and three quarter inches thick. They are some real heavy pieces of wood. As you can kind of tell from the diagonal stripes on the side of the log there, those are season cracks. This thing's been down for most of a year. Um, and that those cracks are following the grain, so the grain spirals around this log. Um, it's going to make for some really unique character in the wood, but it makes for a less stable piece of wood, less solid piece of wood, because the grain cuts through it at such a steep angle, the wood can be broke on the grain, kind of like splitting firewood. 
the shorter the piece of firewood, the easier it is to split. The good thing about it is that spiral grain doesn't go all the way to the core of the tree. It is just in the outside, I don't know, several inches, but it's, it doesn't go all the way to the pith that way. So now we've got the bark cut slab off of here and got the first usable slab off and we'll take a look at it. It has some pretty unique character in it. But you can also see by looking at it what I was talking about about the spiral grain doesn't go real deep into it. It's just on the outer edges of it which is kind of a interesting thing. Now we're going to get the second slab cut off of here. This uh, second one is going to be full length of the log, of course, as you can see, on at least on the one side. A little bark on the other. Um, and, of course, the further we cut down toward the bed, the larger diameter this log gets um, for its full length of the cut. Right here where I'm cutting at this very moment, I have a two or three inches of slack between the outboard guide roller and the log, but by the time we get into the next cut, I will not. Right here you see a bunch of sawdust spew up out of the cut. That's actually coming up out of a knot hole, one of those small knots that I was referencing that was on the top. These old things are big and heavy. And they're up high, as you see, they're even with my shoulders. The only way I can get enough leverage against them to push them off of the top of there with all the friction is to climb up on the axle of the sawmill to get them started moving. Once I get them started and falling off of the other side, I just have to kind of encourage them to slide down the forks on my tractor. The vertical log stops on the other side, which you can't see from here. They are, they just come up about a foot tall. And the, uh, the log, of course, is 36 on that big end. So half of that is 18. So the log stops don't come up to the center of the log. So they don't touch the largest diameter portion of this log. So the log is actually overhanging the log stops toward the operator. It's overhanging enough that I actually had to put lumber against those to shim it back toward the camera to keep the log out of that operator side guide roller that is fixed to the mill. What you just saw when I come to a stop in the middle of the cut there was the outboard guide roller getting hung. And here's a look at the inboard guide roller getting hung now. Luckily, neither one of them were hung very bad. The outboard one, or the inboard one, the one toward the operator, was just hung on some bark and the bark on this is coming off so I was able to jiggle it around and get the bark to just break up. On the other one it was just barely scrubbing the wood. The first couple of these slabs that I was pushing off, this uh, tail end of them was a little bit narrower than the other end. I was able to push it off with a little bit less effort, but the deeper we get into this, the full width it gets, and it takes considerable more effort to get that started. I'm not sure why it does that, but it, uh, the leftover sawdust in the curve kind of locks everything in place until you get it moving and then once you do it kind of rolls it up like marbles or something. Well here 
I've realized that uh, I'm not going to be able to make another cut on this without doing some more trimming with the chainsaw. So that's what you're seeing here. So I'm trying to just, just take off enough to clear it. I don't want to narrow these slabs up at this point any more than necessary. So I'm just trying to baby it where I can get it through here. I didn't really have the camera set at the best angle for you to see the chips coming off of the saw, but these are obviously chips from cross cutting and not ripping. When you rip with a chainsaw, you get long stringy material coming out that will actually try to plug the saw up on you at times. Uh, but this, this is very short pieces of sawdust. Hopefully that cut will get us where we can get some more slabs off of here. It looks like that's got us clearing by about a quarter of an inch. So as long as we don't get any worse than that, we'll be in good shape. Well, we've hung up again. I guess we'll get the chainsaw back out, but first we've got to back this thing up a bit. Sometimes that's easier said than done. This uh, 747 blade is doing a pretty good job of clearing the kerf out, uh, so I'm able to fiddle with it and get it to walk backwards. Sometimes you just can't do that. I suppose I could have rolled this log up on 90 degrees and took a cut off of it and for sure got it that's the correct clearance all the way down but i really didn't want it, this thing as heavy as it is unnecessarily banging and beating up the sawmill in addition it would have taken a fair amount of time on this mill of course you can't uh, roll the log both ways so once you've went 90 degrees you have to go all the way back around to get where you was at we'll get this trimmed up here in just a second and be back to sawing it won't take very long at all Now maybe we can finally finish getting this slab cut off of here and move on. Did I happen to mention these old things is heavy? They sure are. Got a place on the operator side that's just a little bit tight there. Debating on whether I need to get the chainsaw out or just exactly what I need to do. I ended up just grabbing a crow uh, Got a place on the operator side that's just a little bit tight there. Debating on whether I need to get the chainsaw out or just exactly what I need to do. I ended up just grabbing a claw hammer and using the claw part of it to knock the bark off and I think that'll be okay for now. One more quick double check here. It's a lot easier to check now than it is to get hung up in the cut. While I'm doing that, y'all have a look at these slabs we've been cutting off of here. Other than that rot,
coming in there from that limb. That's some pretty good looking stuff. Um, I think that rock can be filled with epoxy. Once these are dry, of course, a person can take the uh, two slabs, and whichever sides have the most bark left on them, you can take the other side and straight line them and glue them together book match. Um, I made a table 15 years ago probably, uh, in fact it was cherry, using my LT-10. Um, it's about 28 inches wide and the sawmill wouldn't cut but 20 wide. But I was able to take those, book match them, only flip them end to end so it kind of shaped like a dog bone and has a crotch on both ends of it. I had to do just a little more chainsaw work on that end. Um, it just was kind of flared out there. What the deal is, is that that log has a crook in it and the crook is kind of down and toward the camera. That's why I keep having trouble with this as we get closer and closer to the pith. It keeps walking further over toward us. The other operator side, it is actually coming away from the roller just a little bit right there. Not very much, just enough that I don't have to trim it. But the tight spot over there is right dead center of the log. I think we are actually at the pith cut on the uh, butt end of this log. We're not quite at it. I think we actually cut through the pith in this from one end to the other. I tried to capture it in the big end, but the log's just not straight enough, even with two and three quarter inch wide piece of material. Since we're a full halfway through this thing now, uh, actually a little over, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over because we're getting down close to my log stops on the other side. Um, if we go to trying to put those down, we're gonna lose the hold that I had on the log anyway, and it's gonna shift over and get in our way on the outboard roller so we're going to flip it over here you can kind of see as i'm flipping it how big a mess the underside of this was as far as trying to get it all lined up on the sawmill in hindsight i should have stopped right there and cut just a little bit off of the width of this but i was more focused on getting it turned over without flipping it over the top of those log stops and having it land over in the mill shed where I couldn't reach it. I'd had to drug the mill plumb out of there to have been able to get a hold of it with the tractor. So as you can see, the log turner has done a pretty good job of turning it up 90 degrees, but I'm using the log clamp to get underneath it and pull the bottom of it back toward the camera. Um, and then I don't want that over thousand pound piece of material slamming down on the bed. So I've snuck the clamp back up under there and using it to slowly let it back down flush on the bed. Now we've got it all like we want it. I'm going to bring the clamp out and try to clamp it. And guess what? It's too wide for the clamp to do any clamping. Of course, it's heavy enough that uh, it shouldn't try to rock around. But I've got it all the way over against those stops down this side. And we're just out of room. As you can tell, there's a pretty significant belly in the middle of this. So what I'm going to do is kind of take a little slab cut off of this 
knob on here where these two crotches are and uh, then I'm going to take a slab or two just kind of off of this end because they're actually once I get down in here they're gosh they're two foot by nearly four foot so they're definitely worth cutting off of here instead of just dropping way down and trying to cut one big old slab Well, it's cutting a little bit slower than it was when I first started. I'm not sure if I've taken the edge off of this blade. I'm sure I have. The uh, log was pretty clean, though. But I am cutting a lot of cross grain right here. You know, the, those two uh, limbs came out. If, if they were still on there, they would be coming up and out both sides right there. While I was cutting this last slab, I was eyeballing the clearance on all my guide rollers and decided that I just wasn't going to be able to make it on the next one. The only reason I was able to make it on this last one was that little bevel cut that's on the side facing the camera there was narrow enough to allow me to get in there. So what I really need to do with that chainsaw is start at that bevel at the top and cut it all the way down. Well, I decided instead of trying to do that right against the log deck to just flip that rascal up and use the sawmill to cut a nice straight even line off of there and I could get it just exactly the amount that I need to cut off. That's why I said a while ago in hindsight I should have Tuck a little bit off of that edge while I had it standing up in the flipping it over process. Um, so I'm going to use the forks to gently let that rascal back down the way it came. You know, because the log turner, all I can do is keep turning in the same direction. So I'd have to flip it and flip it and reflip it. Or this was just a little quicker, I thought, and get it down on that log clamp and then I can ease it back down on the deck and get it clamped up. Now I've got it all clamped up and ready to go at it again. So I've dropped down to two and three quarters again, which is actually going to put me cutting off a full slab, but a lot of it's going to be junk. So once I get it cut off of here, um, down off on the ground, I'm going to take a chainsaw and cut that good portion off and keep it and trash the rest of it. Once we get this off of here though, that'll give us a pretty nice open face all the way down to get us another pretty decent slab off of. It'll be a little wider on the end that I'm standing on than the top end of it, but that'll be okay. This whole thing being out of balance from weight-wise from one end to the other made it a bit squirrely trying to get it off of the mill.
I've got earplugs in when I'm running this sawmill that I can still hear some, of course. And uh, while I'm operating this on this wide cut here, what I'm doing is I get it started and I ease the forward speed up till I just start detecting that the drive belt has just a tiny bit of squeak to it. And then I back it back down just under that where that goes away. And that's that's kind of how I'm guiding what forward speed I'm running. I'm running a 2BX72, which is two B belts made together. Um, and according to Woodmiser, not on this sawmill, but on others that they sell with that same belt and approximate horsepower, they say to run it at 14 pounds and 7 sixteenths deflection. So that, that's how I've got it adjusted and I've checked it recently. So it's, it's not that my belt's running loose, it's that I'm crowding the belt on the horsepower. So here we're cutting the last slab off of this. Um, what I'm doing is actually, I don't have enough to split down the middle and cut two. The way it ended up, I've got about an inch and a half and a two and three quarters. And I can't get down and cut that inch and a half without getting really close to the bed. Um, ordinarily on most things, as you go over that log clamp, you can open it up and get that guide roller and guard and everything out of the way of that log clamp. Well, I'm already open all the way, so I can't get away from that log clamp any. So the only way I could get over the log clamp if I was cutting that inch and a half at the bottom would be to drop the clamp off so what I'm doing is cutting that inch and a half off of the top and leaving the two and three quarter slab on the deck and that allows me to just get over it all right and really the bottom slab is probably the best because as you can see there's a lot of wane on this upper portion Did I mention that these things was heavy? I'm getting tired of shoving these things around. I'm gonna raise them up with this log clamp, get them nice and clear of the deck. I'm gonna go jump on the tractor, stick them forks in here and pick them up and I won't have to handle them anymore. Well, until I flip them around, clean them off and, and get them stickered and stacked. So here's a look at all of them stacked up. Uh, the upper portion of them, I got them flipped around, as you can tell, so it's a little disjointed. Um, and the second one down, the inch and a half one's on top. The next la layer, layer down is two pieces. Um, the one that I cut the bark end off of and the little short slab that I cut off of the second side are both stacked there in one place. I appreciate you tuning in. If this is your kind of thing, please like and subscribe. Have a good day.